a secret air of pure felicity, deep like a sapphire heaven, our spirits breathe. Our hearts and bodies feel its obscure call, our senses grow for it and touch and lose. If this we drew, the world would sink in the void. If this were not, nothing could move or leap. A hidden bliss is at the root of things. A mute delight regards time's countless works. To house God's joy in things, space gave wide room. To house God's joy in self, our souls were born. This universe, an old enchantment guards. Its objects are carved cups of world delight, whose charmed wine is some deep soul's raptured drink. The all-wonderful has packed heaven with his dreams. He has made blank ancient space his marble house. He spilled his spirit into matter's signs. His fires of grandeur burn in the great sun. He glides through heaven, shimmering in the moon. He is beauty caroling in the fields of sound. He chants the stanzas of the odes of wind. He silence, watching in the stars at night. He wakes at dawn and calls from every bough. Lies stunned in the stone and dreams in flower and tree. Even in this labor and dollar of ignorance, on the hard, perilous ground of difficult earth, in spite of death and evil circumstance, a will to live persists, a joy to be. There is a joy in all that meets the sense, a joy in all experience of the soul, a joy in evil, and a joy in good, a joy in virtue, and a joy in sin. Indifferent to the threats of karmic law, joy dares to grow upon forbidden soil. Its sap runs through the plant and flowers of pain. It thrills with the drama of hate and tragic doom. It tears its food from sorrow and ecstasy. On danger and difficulty, whets its strength. It wallows with the rapture and the war, and lifts its head an equal of the stars. It shares the fairies' dance, dines with the gnome. It basks in the light and heat of many suns, the sun of beauty and the sun of power, flatter and foster it with golden beams. It grows towards the titan and the god. On earth it lingers, drinking its deep feel to the symbol of her pleasure and her pain, of the grapes of heaven, and the flowers of the abyss, of the flame steps, and the torment craft of hell, and dim fragments of the glory of paradise. In the small paltry pleasures of man's life, in his petty passions and joys, it finds a taste, a taste in tears and torture of broken hearts, in the crown of gold and in the crown of thorns, in life's nectar of sweetness and its bitter wine, 
all being it explores for unknown bliss, sounds all experience for things new and strange. Life brings into the earthly creature's days a tongue of glory from a higher sphere. It deepens in his musings and his heart. It leaps at the splendor of some perfect world. It exults in his high resolves and noble deeds, wonders in his errors, dares the abyss's brim. It climbs in his climbings, wallows in his fall. Angel and demon brides his chambers share, possessors or competitors for life's heart. To the enjoyer of the cosmic scene, his greatness and his littleness equal are. His magnanimity and meanness, hues, cast on some neutral background of the gods. The artist's skill he admires, who made the plan, but not forever endures this danger gain. Wisdom and joy prepare their perfect crown. Truth, superhuman, calls to thinking man. At last, this soul turns to eternal things. In every shrine it cries for the clasp of God. Then is there played the crowning mystery. Then is achieved the long for miracle. Immortal bliss, her white celestial eyes, opens on the stars. She stirs her mighty limbs. Time thrills to the suffix of her amour song, and space fills with a white beatitude. Then, leaving to its grief the human heart, abandoning speech and the name determined realms, through a gleaming far-seen sky of wordless thought, through naked, thought-free heavens of absolute sight, she climbs to the summits. When the unborn idea, remembering the future that must be, looks down upon the works of levering force, immutable above the world, it made. In the vast golden laughter of truth's sun, like a great heaven bird on a motionless sea, is poised our winged ardor of created joy on the still deep of the eternal's peace. This was the end. This is the supernal law, nature's allotted task, when beauty drenched in dim mist waters of inconstant sleep, out of the void this grand creation rose. For this the spirit came into the abyss, and charged with its power, matters unknowing force, in night's bare session to cathedral light, in death's realm the patriate immortality, a mystic slow transfiguration works. All our art starts from mud and ends in sky, and love that was once an animal's desire, then a sweet madness in the rapturous heart, an ardent comradeship in the happy hand becomes a wide spiritual yearning space. A lonely soul passions for the alone. The heart that loved man thrills to the love of God. A body is his chamber and his shrine. Then is our being rescued from separateness. All is itself. All is new felt in God.
a lover leaning from the cloister's door, gathers the whole world into his single breast. Then shall the business fail of night and death, when unity is won, when strife is lost, and all is known, and all is clasped by love. Who turn back to ignorance and pain? O death, I have triumphed over thee within. I quiver no more with the assault of grief. A mighty calmness seated deep within has occupied my body and my sense. It takes the world's grief and transmutes to strength. It makes the world's joy one with the joy of God. My love eternal sits throned on God's calm. For love must soar beyond the very heavens and find its secret sense ineffable. It must change its human ways to ways divine, yet keep its sovereignty of earthly bliss. O death, not for my heart's sweet poignancy, nor for my happy body's bliss alone, I have claimed from thee the living Sattvan, but for his work and mine, our sacred charge. Our lives are God's messengers beneath the stars to dwell under death's shadow they have come, tempting God's light in earth for the ignorant race. His love to fill the hollow in men's hearts. His bliss to heal the unhappiness of the world. For I, the woman, am the force of God. He, the eternal's delegate soul in man. My will is greater than thy law, O death. My love is stronger than the bonds of fate. Our love is the heavenly seal of the supreme. I guard that seal against thy rending hands. Love must not cease to live upon the earth, for love is the bright link to earth and heaven. Love is the far transcendence angel here. Love is man's lion on the absolute. But to the woman, death the God replied. With the ironic laughter of his voice, discouraging the labor of the stars, even so men cheat the truth with splendid thoughts. Thus will thou hire the glorious charlatan mind to weave from his ideal's gossamer air a fine raiment for thy body's new desires and thy heart's clutching greedy passion clothe. Dog not the wave of life with magic hues. Make rather thy thought a plain and faithful glass, reflecting matter and mortality, and know thy soul, a product of the flesh, a made-up self in a constructed world. Thy words are large marbles in a mystic dream. For how in the soil heart of man could dwell the inarticulate grandeur of the dream-built God, or who can see a face and form divine in the naked, two-legged worm thou callest man? O human face, put off mind-painted masks. The animal be the worm that nature meant. Accept thy futile birth, 
die in narrow life. For truth is bare like stone and hard like death. Bare in the bareness, hard with truth's hardness lit. But Savitri replied to the dark God, Yes, I am human. Yet shall man by me, since in humanity dwells, is our, the God, trample thee down to reach the mortal heights, transcending grief and pain and fate and death. Yes, my humanity is a mask of God. He dwells in me, the mover of my eyes turning the great wheel of his cosmic work. I am the living body of his light. I am the thinking instrument of his power. I incarnate wisdom in an earthly breast. I am the conquering and unslavable will. The formless spirit drew in me its shape. In me, are the nameless and the secret name. Death from the incredulous darkness sent its cry. O priestess in imagination's house, persuade first nature's fixed immutable laws and make the impossible thy daily work. How canst thou force to wait to a eternal force, irreconcilable in their embrace. They cancel the glory of their pure extremes, an unhappy wedlock maims their stunted force. How shall thy will make one the true and false? When matter is all, their spirit is a dream. If all are the spirit, matter is a lie. And who was the liar who forged the universe? The real with the unreal cannot mate. He who would turn to God must leave the world. He who would live in the spirit must give up life. He who has met the self renounced self. The voyagers of the million roots of mind who have travelled through existence to its end, sages exploring the world oceans vast have found extinction, the soul harbour say. Two only are the doors of man's escape, death of his body, matter's gate to peace, death of his soul, is last felicity. In me all take refuge, for I, death, am God. But Sabitri replied to mighty death, My heart is wiser than the reason's thoughts. My heart is stronger than thy bonds, O death. It sees and feels the one heart beat in all. It feels the high transcendent sun-like hands. It sees the cosmic spirit at its work. In the dim night it lies alone with God. My heart's strength can carry the grief of the universe and never falter from the luminous track. Its white tremendous orbit through God's peace. It can drink up the sea of all delight and never lose the white spiritual touch, the calm that broods in the deep infinite. He said, Art thou indeed so strong, O heart, O soul so free? And canst thou gather then bright pleasure from my wayside flowering boughs, yet falter not from the hard journey's goal, 
meet the world's dangerous touch and never fail. Show me the strength and freedom from my laws. But Savitri answered, Surely I shall find among the green and whispering woods of life close-bosomed pleasures only mine since his or mine for him because our joys are one. And if I linger, time is ours and God's. And if I fall, is not his hand near mine. All is a single plan. Each wayside act deepens the soul's response, brings nearer the goal. Death the contemptuous nihil, answered her. So prove thy absolute force to the wise gods by choosing earthly joy for self-demand and yet from self and its gross masks live free. Then will I give thee all thy soul desires, all the brief joys earth keeps for mortal hearts. Only the one dearest wish that outweighs all hard laws forbid and thy ironic fate. My will once wrought remains unchanged through time, and Sattvan can never again be thine. But Savitri replied to the vague power, If the eyes of darkness can look straight at truth, look at my heart, and knowing what I am, give what thou wilt, or what thou must, O death. Nothing I claim but Sattvan alone. There was a hush as if of doubtful fates, as one disdainful still who yields a point. Death bowed his sovereign head in cold ascent. I give to thee, save from death and poignant fate, Whatever once the living Sattvan desired in his heaven for Savitri. Bright noons I give thee, an unwounded dawn. Daughters of thy own shape in heart and mind. Fair hero sons and sweetness undisturbed of union with the husband dear and true. And thou shalt harvest in the joyful house felicity of the surrounded eaves. Love shall bind by thee many gathered hearts. The opposite sweetness in thy days shall meet of tender service to the life's desired and loving empire over all thy love Two poles of bliss made one, O Savitri. Return, O child, to thy forsaken earth. But Savitri replied, Thy gifts resist. Earth cannot flower if lonely I return. Then death once more sent forth his angry cry as chides a lion, his escaping prey. What knowest thou of earth's rich and changing life, who thinkest that one man died, all joy must cease? Hope not to be unhappy till the end, for grief dies soon in the tired human heart. Soon other guests the empty chambers fill. A transient painting on a holiday's floor traced for a moment's beauty lovers me. Or if a voyager on the eternal trail its objects 
fluent change in its embrace, like waves to a swimmer upon infinite seas. But Savitri replied to the Ved God, Give me back Sattvan, my only Lord. Thy thoughts are vacant to my soul that feels the deep eternal truth in transient things. Death answered her, Return and try thy soul. Soon shalt thou find a peace that other men on Lebishad have beauty, strength and truth. And when thou hast half forgotten, one of these shall wind himself around thy heart that needs some human answering heart against thy breast. For who, being mortal, can dwell glad alone? Then Suttavan shall glide into the past, a gentle memory pushed away from thee by new love, and the children's tender hands, till thou shalt wonder if thou lovest at all. Such is the life arch travail has conceived. A constant stream that never is the same. But Savitri replied to mighty death, O dark ironic critic of God's work, thou mockst the mind and body's faltering search for what the heart holds in a prophet hour, and the immortal spirit shall make its own. Mine is a heart that worshipped, though forsaken, the image of the God, its love adored. I have burned in flame to travel in his steps. Are you not they who bore vast solitude, seated upon the hills, alone with God? Why dost thou vainly strive with me, O death? A mind delivered from all twilight thoughts to whom the secrets of the gods are plain. For now at last I know beyond all doubts the great stars burn with my unceasing fire and life and death are both its fuel made. Life only was my blind attempt to love. Earth saw my struggle, heaven my victory. All shall be seized, transcended. They shall kiss, casting their veils before the marriage fire, the eternal bridegroom and eternal bride. The heavens accept our broken flights at last. On our life's brow that breaks the waves of time, no signal light of hope has gleamed in vain. She spoke, the boundless members of the God, as if by secret ecstasy assailed, shuddered in silence, as obscurely stirred oceans of dim fields, delivered to the moon. Then lifted up as by a sudden wind, around her, in that vague and glimmering world, the twilight trembled like a bursting wave. Thus, with arms speech, the great opponents strove. Around those spirits, in the glittering mist, a deepening half-light flayed with pearly wings as if to reach some far ideal morn. Outlined her thoughts flew to the gleaming haze, mingling bright pinion with its lights and veils, and all her words like dazzling jewels caught 
into the glow of a mysterious world or drift in the rainbow shifting of the hues. Like echoes swam, fainting into far south. All utterance, all mood, must there become an unenduring tissue sewn by mind to make a gossamer robe of beautiful change. Intent upon a silent will, she walked on the dim grass of vague, unreal plains, a floating veil of visions in her front, a trailing robe of dreams behind her feet. But now her spirit's flame of constant force, retiring from a sweetness without fruit, called back her thoughts from speech to sit within in a deep room in meditation's house. For only there could dwell the soul's firm truth, imperishable, a tongue of sacrifice. It flamed unquenched upon the central hearth, where burns for the high house lord and his mate, the homestead sentinel and witness fire, from which the altars of the gods are lit. All still compelled went gliding on unchanged. Such was the order of these worlds reversed. The mortal led, the God and spirit obeyed. And she behind was leader of their march. And they in front were followers of her will. Onward the journey through the drifting ways, vaguely companioned by the glimmering mists. But faster now all fled as if perturbed, escaping from the clearness of a soul. A human bird upon jeweled wings of wind, born like a colored and an bosom fire by spirits carried in a pearl hued cave, on through the enchanted dimness moved her soul. Death walked in front of her, and Satyavan, in the dark front of death, a failing star. Above was the unseen balance of his fate.